Cool. So thanks everyone for joining us once again. Uh, the topic of today's webinar is the Modern Business, business Dashboard as brought to you by Chantilly. Um, and just to recap, the folks who are on the call, this is me, Mike, and of course, Chantilly Jaggernoth. Um, we're here at Lovelytics, hoping to give you the best of what we have to offer with Tableau. Um, and just a little bit about Lovelytics. We are a Tableau services and training partner based in Washington, DC. Uh, but we work with clients all over the country, US and Canada. So the goal for today is of course, um, why we're all here. Uh, we're gonna see um, Chantilly kind of unpack and demystify the ways that she makes such incredible visualizations. So with that, Chantilly, I'm just gonna stop sharing and stop muttering and Thanks so much, Mike. I was uh, I was muted. Um, hope everyone is is doing well today. Thank you all for for joining. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, Mike. Really quickly, can you see my screen? Yep. Awesome. All right. So welcome everyone. Uh, today I'm going to walk through how we created the modern business dashboard and the process that I'm going to follow is a process that I talked about last year at the Tableau conference in Vegas and that was on design secrets for a non designer. And the reason I'm going to walk through this exact same process for this dashboard is because these are the things that I take into account whenever I am creating a dashboard from scratch. So as Mike mentioned, I'm Chantilly Jagannath. I am the vice president of data visualization and training at Lovelytics uh, based in Arlington, Virginia, and I am also a 2019 and 2020 Tableau Zen Master. So let's go ahead and start with creating the modern retail sales dashboard. So the dashboard that you all signed up to, to look at today is this dashboard that you see here. So with this dashboard, on the left hand side, we have an overview of all of the sales uh, across the organization. So you have the total sales for, uh, we're looking at December of 2019, the month over month change. So what is that compared to uh, 2018? Then you have a breakdown of each of the regions, right? So the amount for central, east, south, and west. And then for each of the regions, so right now we have central selected, you can see the total sales, that month over month comparison, the total orders, the return rate, the daily sales, the subcategories, so the top five subcategories, and the, the order details. With this dashboard, you can also expand the order details by selecting the expand button up top, and it's going to show you a comprehensive look at all of the orders that were placed and some metrics associated with them. And then you also have the option to export directly within Tableau. So I'm going to go ahead and transition back to PowerPoint so I can walk you all through exactly how this dashboard was created, and then we'll come back to Tableau and walk through the process. So let's get started with the, the design secrets for a non-designer. So the five secrets are to first, gather your requirements. Second, create a template. Third, use icon and art to your advantage. Fourth, choose colors that matter. And then five, incorporate your fonts. So let's talk about the requirements. So here are the, the six requirement guidelines that I typically uh, look at whenever I start with a new dashboard. One, you wanna understand the goal of the project. You wanna determine your audience's analytical maturity. You wanna be sure that you think about uh, incorporating end user preferences. So colors, logo, size. You want to uh, refine and prioritize the business questions complete a high level data discovery, and then you wanna determine the, the views needed to answer the questions. So the ones that we're going to focus on today are understanding the, the goal of the project, determining the audience's analytical maturity, and then determining the views that are gonna need it to answer these questions. So the goal of this project or of this dashboard was to create an interactive dashboard that analyzes the company's latest sales data that can be shared with regional leads and their respective analysts. So some of the KPIs that we wanted to see were the total sales, the sales per region, the sales orders and the return rate for each region, the sales per day for each region, the top five selling subcategories for each region, and then the order details for each of them. So here we have an understanding of the project and exactly what we're going to need to create and what our end users are looking for. So next, let's understand the audience who is going to be using our dashboard. 
So we're gonna focus on, on creating an interactive dashboard for the regional leads as well as the analysts. So this lets me know that our end users are probably somewhat familiar with Tableau as they're, uh, they've they probably looked at data before, they may have in, uh, used it on Tableau server or Tableau online. So we don't have to create like a static dashboard. This lets me know because we're looking at leads and analysts, people who typically work with data, we can get a little interactive and creative with how we're creating this dashboard. Next, we're gonna determine the views uh, that we need to, to answer these questions. So we have a band for the total sales. We have a bar chart for the sales per region, a band for the sales orders and the return rate, a line chart that looks at the sales uh, over time, so the sales per day, a bar chart that looks at the top five selling categories, and then a text table that's going to provide the order details. So once we have those requirements, we can then transition to creating a template. Once you've analyzed your data, determine the insight that you would like to convey to your audience, create a grid like template to help organize your thoughts. So here are the requirements that I typically look at when creating a template. So you first wanna make sure that you take a list of all of your requirements and prioritize them and only use what's important. Then you wanna use either blank text boxes or pen and paper to start to outline your dashboard. Third, you wanna make sure you're designing to a grid you want to also incorporate bands and add context. And then you want to use size position, use size and position to show hierarchy. And last but not least, you want to begin to think about icons and the use of color. So I'm going to transition those template requirements and turn them over to more of a modern design focus. So what are some things that you need to think about when you're creating a modern dashboard? So first, you want to make sure that you start with an example in mind. And I'm going to walk you all through how to start or looking at examples. Second, you want to uh, use a simple layout and be sure that you're to incorporate a lot of white space. You want to make sure that you're designing to a grid. You want to incorporate drop shadows for any objects or images that you're using on the dashboard. You want to provide your objects with rounded corners. And then you want to incorporate large bands. So let's start with the first one, looking at examples. Typically, when I'm looking at an example, I either go to Dribbble or Pinterest. And on both of these sites, you can type in modern dashboards, and they provide you with a plethora of examples that you can look at uh, to, to, to help you get started on the design that you want to go with. So I went to Dribbble and to Pinterest, and there were some things that stuck out, some examples that stuck out. And I basically took screenshots of each of those and decided what did I like about each of these and how do I want to incorporate it into the final visualization or the, the final template. So here is a screenshot of a visualization that I saw on Dribbble and things that I liked about this particular screenshot were I like the bands and the indicators that you see here. So I like the, the amount and the indicator. And then I also liked the layout of the charts. I liked how there was a, a, a line chart to the left-hand side that showed the earning revenue over time. I like the sales per category, not necessarily the donut chart that was used, but I liked how it was positioned right next to the earnings chart. And then last but not least, I liked how there was a list of the orders down below and you can have a red and a green indicator that, that displayed the status of that order. So I really liked the layout of this particular chart and I decided that I, I was going to use bits and pieces of this into the final template. Next, for this example, I like the rounded left-hand panel as well as the KPIs with the bars that you see here. So for each of these uh, categories, it's listing out, I guess, the, the number for each of them. So I, I like that left-hand panel that has data incorporated into it, and then you can also use it for navigational purposes. So I really like that about this one. For this example, I like the black and white theme. I like the contrast here. The left-handed dark panel with the uh, white uh, area with the detail. So I really like that about this example. And then for this one, I like the selection panel that was used here. So I liked how whenever a user is selected on a particular section, how it expands and opens up to display exactly what section you're on. I've typically seen uh, people incorporate either a line or an underline or just bold this type of uh, bold the font here to let you know that that is the selection that you're on. However, I really like the attention to detail where it expands and opens up to the broader dashboard. 
So I took each of those elements and I kind of just drew together exactly what I wanted my final dashboard to look like. So I, I took the, the layout that I liked, I took the side panel with the navigation, and then I took the, the, the breakout here with the books and the articles and I changed it all black and white because I decided that I was going to use a black and white dashboard. So next I transitioned to Figma and Figma is what I use to create this template. So Figma is a, a UI tool um, that allows you to create wireframes and mockups and share them with your end users. The web address for it is figma.com. You can create an account for free and I'm now going to transition and show you exactly how I created this template. When you sign up for Figma, it's going to take you to a drawing board and you can create a file or a new project. In the top panel is where you'll see the list of the objects or the tools that you can start to use in order to design out your dashboard. I typically think of this area right here as my drawing panel. So this is where we will create the dashboard uh, background or the template. So the first thing I did was I brought in a rectangle and this is going to be the background of the dashboard. What's neat about Figma is that as you um, increase the size of your background, it translates to the exact same size in Tableau. So as you can see here, the width and the height of this is 1,013 by 795, and that's going to translate to the exact same width and height in Tableau. Here I'm gonna change my width and my height to 1,300 by 950, because this is the size that I determined I wanted to use um, for the dashboard. And I simply changed the zoom of it to, to zoom to fit. Now I want the dashboard background to be white. So I'll change the fill here to white. Next, I'm going to bring in the left-hand panel. To draw another panel on here, I'll simply take a rectangle and draw it on the left-hand side. Now, as I mentioned, one of the things about modern designs are that uh, you're using rounded corners. To round the corners of this shape, you can either click and drag in or if you know the radius that you would like, you can simply use the panel on the right hand side to insert uh, whichever you would like. So I'm going to change this to actually 30, right? And you can center it up and down. So you can move it up and down and center it uh, using the lines that are provided by Figma. Next, I'll change the fill of this to uh, the hex code that I like. So I didn't want to go too, too dark with a, a pure black, but I also didn't want to go too light with a, a light gray. So I did in between, and the hex code for that was 2B, 2B, 2C. Next, I'll incorporate the drop shadows for this. So to add an effect for a particular shape, you simply select the shape, and then you select effect. And once you select the plus sign, you'll see a drop shadow that automatically appears. And the drop shadow by default appears on the bottom uh, left and the right hand side. So to edit that drop shadow, you simply select the sun icon or the light icon. And I'm gonna change the blur to 15. We'll keep the X the same for the drop shadow. We'll change the Y to 10. And then we're also gonna keep uh, the same color and level of opacity here. So there I have my left-hand side. Next to incorporate the band areas that you saw, I simply created another rectangle, placed it here, and the width of this is going to be 281, and the height of it will be 113. And I'll move it up about right here. To add the, the radius, again, you simply use the panel on the right-hand side. I'm going to take this to 30, change the fill of it to white. And then to help this white uh, uh, square stand out on top of this white background, we're gonna add the effects to it. Another drop shadow, but here we're gonna take the blur to 10. We're gonna have an X of zero, a Y of four, and then we're gonna leave this at 25. And this allows the box now to stand out on top of this white background. Instead of recreating this from scratch, I'm simply just gonna say Control C and copy and paste it. And do the same thing here. Now, once you have three things aligned like this, you can hold Shift, manually select them, 
and then allow Figma to distribute these um, evenly horizontally. So if there, if I was wondering if there was, you know, the same amount of space here as there is here, you can use that pretty easily. That functionality uh, to distribute these evenly. Next, I'm still going to copy and paste another one of these so that I can keep the same drop shadow that I've had and create the line chart area. So here is where I'm going to have a line chart. And remember, we want to design to a grid. So I'm going to snap this to the right corner of the band box above it. I'm making sure that this one aligns on the left hand side. And this is allowing us to continue to design to a grid. From there, I'll hold control again. And for this one, I'm going to make sure that it aligns with the right hand box that's right above it. So it aligns here and then it aligns here and here as well. And then last but not least, we will incorporate the order details table to do that. Simply going to draw the box here, go down, and leave it as such. And there we have it. So this is what we're going to use for our background within Tableau. So last but not least, I know that within this dashboard, I want to have a navigation panel on the left-hand side. And to do that, I'm going to need shapes, right? So before I export this, I just want to make sure that I'm sizing out my shapes correctly so that when I bring them into the Tableau repository, I know that the, the fit is going to be within this box. It can fit within this box. So I'm going to add in another rectangle about right here. I'm going to change the size of this one to be uh, corners of about 50 each. And then I'm going to change the color of it to a medium gray, I think this is the one. There we go. So 4B, 4B, 4C. Alrighty, so I like the way this one looks and it fits within this panel here. So I can um, duplicate this at some point and make sure that I'm exporting just this to my Tableau repository. Now I also wanna create my selectors. To do that, I'm simply going to duplicate this I'll also add a, a drop shadow there. I'm going to duplicate this, change the uh, background of it to white. And instead of having all four rounded corners, I'm going to use Figma's um, uh, radius here to, to select exactly which corners I want to round and which ones I don't. So by expanding the squares here, we can select the independent corners and give each corner its own radius. So the top left and the uh, bottom left, I want to keep them at 50, top left and bottom left. However, the ones on the right, I want to change those to zero. I'll expand this here just a little bit. And next, I want to add in another shape. And the shape I'm going to add in is a polygon. So I'll add in a polygon, which is a, a, a triangle by default. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to specify the number of corners that I want. So I want four of them. It's going to change it to somewhat of a diamond. I'm going to change the fill of the diamond to white. I'm going to center align it with the panel, the panel selector. And then by double clicking on it, you can change this to a vector. And with a vector, you can resize exactly how you would like those corners positioned. So I'm just going to remove that right hand corner double click on it again so that it goes back to allowing me to resize it. And now I'm going to group these two objects together by holding shift, right clicking and saying group selection. From here, I'm just going to simply right click on my page or I'm actually going to create a new page. I'm just going to take these two elements, control X to cut it and I'm pasting it here. And it's zoomed in rather large, so we're going to zoom out. Now the background is here, and I'm going to export the background simply by clicking on the page, selecting the export button, and it's going to show you a preview of it. And now you can export this. And for my shapes, I'm going to select them individually, select export the rectangle, and export the group. 
For your rectangle and your select, you want to place these in your Tableau repository. So to navigate to your Tableau repository, it's within your documents folder. You select my Tableau repository, then you go to shapes and you can create a custom shape folder. And I've already created one and it's called uh, modern dashboard. And here is where I've incorporated the group and the rectangle. So I brought them into the Tableau repository and that's a really important step here. So now when we go back to Tableau, you wanna make sure that you size your dashboard accordingly. So it's going to be 1300 by 950 because that's the background that I determined in the template. So after you've created your template, you want to fill it in, right? So now let's fill that in. I'm going to take an image and drag it to the background. I'm gonna choose the image and that image is going to be the download. So here is where I've selected that image and I'm going to press OK. Now the circles that you see here were also built into Figma and those were simply just circles as the shape and they were placed in the corner. Change that background to 2B, 2B, 2C. And those were the circles that you see there. So I brought in my background and now the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna fill it in. So I'll remove the padding here on this because I wanted to take up the entire space. And you wanna now fill this in. So I've already created each of the worksheets that need to be placed in these boxes. So I'll walk through those rather quickly. So here we have the sales ban, which is the total sales. Here we have the orders ban, which is simply a font size of 22. And then we have the colors that we need the month over month to be. We have the return band. We have the line chart, the top five. And then we have our details table, right? So now I'll transition back to the dashboard. And when you start to fill it in, you simply change your objects to floating and you drag these in one by one entire view and there you have it so once i place all the dash the the objects on the dashboard all the worksheets this is what we're left with this is what we have so far so the main point of this was that a lot of you asked questions about this left hand panel so i'll, I'll walk you through how the left hand panel was created so the first thing that we want to do for the left hand panel is we want to create the shapes. We want to bring in the, the, the black shapes that we just created in Tableau. I mean, excuse me, in Figma. So we want to bring these in and we want to incorporate the sales, the, the country, excuse me, the region uh, header for those. So if you create a new worksheet, you simply take region to rows. I'm going to select entire view. You change your mark to shape. And from there, you select shape on your marks card, more shapes. You change your palette to whichever folder you selected or created within your repository. And I created the modern one. And here we have that shape. And now I'll press apply and you see it here. You increase the size of it. And then to add the labels to it, you take region, I'm holding control, taking region, dragging it to label and you want it to be uh, on the left-hand side. So I'll change the alignment to left. I'm going to uh, increase the size of it to about 12, and I'm actually gonna make it white. From there, I'm gonna hide the header. And the reason I'm not worrying about positioning, on, positioning, positioning it directly on the black uh, shape right now is because when I transition it over to the dashboard, it's going to be smaller, the fit is gonna be smaller. So we'll see exactly what it looks like there. So I'll go back to the panel. And here we simply wanna first bring in our worksheet that we just created. Hide the title, remove the background, and to position the font now that we see what it looks like, we're gonna change this to top. I'm gonna to actually expand this, 
Press enter a few times, space a couple of times. And then there we have it. And we can actually increase the size of these a little bit more. Alrighty. All right, so the next worksheet that we want is the, uh, the line chart. So I've already created the line chart and to show you all, here's what it looks like. It's simply the sales per region and to add the circles to the, to the uh, outer parts of the bar, I've used measure names and measure values. The measurement on the left-hand side is a min of zero and the measurement on the right is the sum of sales. And when you do a dual axis for them, it's going to bring them on top of each other. So dual axis, and then you remove the measure name colors, and then it transitions you back to this. Now to adjust the size of them, you simply select whichever one, whichever marks card you wanna adjust for, and size it up to the best of your ability. It's probably gonna look a little bit different, when we transition it over to the dashboard. So I'll decrease showing the header here, and then I will make sure I have a synchronized axis as well. So I'll show the axis here, make sure I do a synchronized axis, show the header, hide the header here. And now when we go back to the dashboard, we can place this worksheet here. Hide the title entire view, size it here. Alrighty, so here we have the bottom selectors. Next, we want to incorporate the selector on top of it. So whenever a country, excuse me, a region is selected, we want to make sure that it displays that white circle or that white selector. To do that, you create a new worksheet in Tableau, and I'm actually going to change the background to black so you all can see it. We're going to do the same thing, take region to rows, change the mark to shape. I'm going to do entire view, and then we're going to select shape on the marks card, more shapes. And here we'll change the shape to the rectangle that we created earlier. So there we have it. Increase the size of it. And then to add the label, we're going to take region and drag it to label. And this label, we want it to be on the left. We want it to be dark and we want to pad the same way that we did for the other shape. Left top. Hide your header. Hide your row dividers and change the background back to none. Now when I go to the dashboard, I can simply drag it in right on top, entire view, and align it on top of the other chart. Gonna increase the size of it just a little bit more. Alrighty, that should do it. Okay, great. So last but not least, um, basically the last thing that I had to do was create a blank or a transparent worksheet that sits on top of this final worksheet. And the reason I needed to do that is so that I can allow the users to select this entire uh, space right here and it transition for each of the regions. 
So I created a, a, transit, uh, a transparent worksheet. And basically to do that, I first had to go to PowerPoint and insert a square. I changed the square to have no fill and no outline. Then you save this as a picture. And from there, you download it to your repository. So my Tableau repository shapes, modern dashboard, and here I've saved it as blank. Go back to Tableau, place region on rows, edit your marks card. Your blank one is gonna be your first one. Your folder is alphabetized, so I named it as blank, so that's how I know it's the first one here. And now when we go back to the dashboard, <laughs> We're going to bring that in right on top of the last one. Hide the title. So here represents each of the rows. You can't see them, each of the regions. You can't see them because it's transparent. But what you can see is that when I go to dashboard actions, I can now incorporate an action so that whenever the user clicks on the transparent worksheet, it's going to filter everything on the dashboard as a lead filter. So add an action, select the transparent header as your only header, and then we want to adjust everything on the dashboard as a leave filter. So leave the filter. We want to adjust everything here um, except for the panel total sales because that's for the entire organization and the panel month over month indicator as well as sheet 15, which was uh, the first two charts. So we wanna make sure we keep our shapes, our first shape, and then our bar chart. Press okay, press okay again. And what you'll see here is that when I select one, when I select the transparent header, it should go ahead and adjust. Now I'm gonna clean this up a little bit so that it can actually adjust the worksheet that I needed to adjust. So to do that, let me go back to this one, the final version to show you all what it does. In order to do that, you wanna to go to dashboard actions, edit this, the header, the blank header, and you're telling it exactly what to adjust. Press OK, press OK. And from there, this is the original view. When you select one of these, it's now going to remove everything in the background and keep the pills uh, that were underneath it. So we're using the transparent header to adjust everything that's underneath it. So here's the transparent header. Here's the bar chart. Here's the selector worksheet. And all we did was stack them right on top of each other. You have to make sure that your table layout is also set to show empty rows. So if I did not have empty rows, show empty rows selected for the white background that you see here, if I didn't have empty rows selected for it, what's gonna happen is that as I adjust this filter, is going to try to expand whichever region is selected to take up the entire space. So what you wanna make sure is that even though region, the central region is selected here, that we're still showing the other regions. So to do that, you simply select analysis up top, table layout, and then show empty rows. That way it's still showing the central shape and the other ones are just blank. And when you do that, it automatically pushes it back up to the space that it needs to be in. Alrighty, so that's creating your template and filling it in. So let's transition on to how we use art to our advantage. So simply using icons and images within your dashboard, it can take it from basic to visually appealing. 
Uh, here are the icon and art guidelines that I typically follow. So you want to make sure that you're using icons that communicate meaning and they're easy to recognize. You want to make sure that you're including labels and providing context, uh, making sure that your icons are simple, nothing too creative, nothing too creative. Keep your styles consistent and cohesive. You want to use dashboard colors and schemes, and then you want to make sure you're reducing the icon graphic details. We're going to focus on communicating meaning, keeping styles consistent, using the dashboard theme, and then reducing the icon graphic details. And the place that I typically get my icons from are flaticon.com. I've also provided other icon sites that you can get stuff from, so the Noun Project, Icons 8. And on flaticon.com, you can simply sign up for a free account. And when you do that, you can search for icons that are going to have meaning or add meaning to your dashboard. So what we want to do is add um, icons to the squares that you see here. I simply searched for money, a box, as well as a return shipment. And I was able to download those icons directly from flaticon.com. So let's talk about choosing colors that matter. So whenever I'm looking at coloring a dashboard, I typically start with letting the brand colors from the basis. So in this instance, we're looking at a black and white dashboard. So every icon or every, every color on the dashboard needed to reflect uh, either black or white. I looked at getting other inspiration from uh, visuals and other arts that's out there. You wanna make sure that you're limiting the number of dominant colors to two. You wanna create accessible color schemes and test them. You wanna use color purposefully and for reinforcement. And if stuck, you want to design in grayscale first and add color to highlight. So we're going to focus on getting inspiration from other art and other visuals. And as I mentioned before, I typically get this inspiration from both Dribble as well as Tableau. So there have been a number of artists or authors within the Tableau community who have started designing uh, dashboards with this modern theme. And here's one that was done by, by, by Ludovic. Uh, he won the Iron Biz contest a few years ago. And here's one of the dashboards that I've seen of his, and it started to really sp uh, spark my interest in creating more modern designs. So that's typically what I follow whenever I'm looking to get inspiration from other uh, visualizations. Next, we're going to uncomplicate fonts. So here are the guidelines that I typically focus on whenever I'm determining which fonts to use in a dashboard. You want to make sure you're sticking to one legible font. You want to use no more than four uh, font sizes, four sizes of a particular font type. You want to avoid custom fonts if possible, be strategic with fonts and background colors, use color and or bold text to emphasize, and then you want to make sure you're aligning left or right and stay away from center alignment. Typically, you want to make sure you're aligning left and you only want to align right if it's just for like design purposes. So if you're looking at like a timeline or something. So I'm going to focus on uh, selecting a legible font, avoiding a custom font, and then using color to emphasize text. In this dashboard, the font that I've decided to, to use was um, this font right here. And here's a list of all of the fonts that are compatible with Tableau Online and Tableau uh, Public. So whenever you're selecting a font, modern fonts, they tend to be a little bit different than what's available on Tableau. However, you wanna make sure that you're selecting one that is still compatible. So the font that I used was here. I'm not sure how to say it, so I'm not even going to try but everything that you see in the dashboard is based off of that one font. So if I go back to Tableau, we're now gonna talk about how I use color to enhance the dashboard. So for this chart right here, I wanted to use color to enhance the profit. So typically if you take measure values and you drag it to color on the marks card, um, what it's going to do is if you do not have show all measure, use separate legends for uh, each of these, it's going to combine all of your measure value legends into one. So to break them out, you simply have to right click on it and select use separate legends. Now, when you do that, you can assign a different color for each of your measurements. So for the sum of sales, I went to a custom diversion because I wanted it to be all black. So I did a two-step color and the left-hand side and the right-hand side of sales, because it's always going to be positive, is both black. I did the same thing for average discount and then the sum of quantity. But for the profit, I wanted if the profit was negative, I wanted it to be red. And if it was green, if it was uh positive, I wanted it to be green. So I used the two-step color palette there, and the left-hand side was red, 
and then the right hand side was green. Additional things that I did for, for the profit was I wanted to also add a symbol if the profit was negative. So to do that, I simply uh, displayed the measure value shelf, right clicked on the sum of profit, and you can format how you want to display just the sum of profit without affecting the sum of sales, average discount, or the sum of quantity. Here, you can select custom. And everything that's to the left of the colon is positive. Everything that's to the right of the colon is, neg is, is uh, negative. So I wanted to bring in an alt code, which is a simple circle for all negative values. I simply placed it right to the right of the colon. And now for all negative values, you see the circle. Let's go back here. Additional things that uh, we did with this dashboard was we incorporated the expandable and the collapsible um, order details chart. To do that, I'm simply just going to duplicate this dashboard and show you exactly how it was created. So first you wanna start with a horizontal container. You drag that horizontal container in and you change the background of it to white. You size your horizontal container to take up the majority of the space so that your users can read what's in the order details table. From there, I've already created a, a duplicate of this, of this worksheet. So you just simply drop, select the drop down and select duplicate sheet. You go back to your dashboard and you hold shift in order to place it within your container. You change the fit of it to fit width because we want our users to still be able to scroll up and scroll down. And any values or, or legends that came in with it, you can X out that container by deleting the container. Now to enable the end user to expand and collapse this container, we simply highlight the container again by double clicking on the gray tab that you see there. And it's going to highlight the blue container you select the drop down and you select add show hide button and that brings in a button. Now you edit your button by selecting more options and selecting edit button and you tell Tableau exactly which dashboard item you want it to show and hide and that's going to be the object that we already created on the dashboard. So this panel that you see in the background. When the button, when the dashboard is shown, so when the horizontal object is shown, you want to change how that button appears. And if the dashboard is shown, excuse me, the object is shown, then typically you want your users to close out the object. So you select the image that you want your users to select. The image that I'm going with is a gray, a light gray grid. From there, you select when the item is hidden. So when this container is hidden, how do you want your users to identify how to expand it? So you simply select item hidden and you choose the item and I want this to be a grid. And now you press OK and it changes it. So when we go to presentation mode, I can select this grid and it's going to expand it uh, in and out. Additional questions that I've received were these buttons. So within Tableau 20.1, uh, 20 you now have uh, export objects on the left hand side and you can bring those in as floating and you can edit those as buttons. You select the export to and you can select image PDF or PowerPoint and you can change it to a particular button style so I use images. You can select the image so for this one if it's a PDF I have a PDF selected here and then you press OK and now you have your PDF button. So you can add that to your dashboard as well. So those are typically some of the, the things that I received questions on whenever we, we first published this dashboard. I actually wanna go back to the original one here uh, just to make sure that I walk through this part one more time. So as you can see, as I'm clicking on the blank sections, it's adjusting the dashboard but obviously it's not adjusting this. So I wanna make sure that you all understand exactly the layout of this panel on the right-hand side. Uh, so I'll walk through that part one more time because I honestly don't think I, I, I covered that 
to the best of my ability. So the first thing, as I mentioned, that you want to bring in is going to be your squares, so your, your background headers. Hide the title there, and you drag that in. The next thing that you want is your sales per region, bar chart, entire view. And you float it directly on top here. This one already has an action on it, so I'll remove the action. Alrighty, so we'll work with this one for right now. Next, we want our selector. So the selector is basically whenever a region is selected, we want to open it up with a white shape. So I'll hide the title here and I'll expand the selector to be placed directly on top of the gray, um, the, the gray shapes that you see in the background. All righty. So there we have that. You just want to align it so that it's somewhat on top of your gray selector or your gray boxes in the background. Expand up. There we go. Alrighty, close enough for us for right now. Then you wanna add in your transparent headers. So this is basically every single uh, region is listed in the background here. You can't see it and that's the point. But what we want is the user to be able to select central, east, south, and west. I'll actually enable the tooltip so that you all can see it. So enable the tooltip and I'll insert the region into it. And as you can see here, here is central, here is east, here is south, and here is west. Then we'll go back to the dashboard. We'll select dashboard, actions, and we want to add in an action. So the action that we want to apply is going to allow our users to select the transparent header. However, we do not want certain uh, worksheets to be affected. So we do not want our black shape header, which are the black squares that you see here to be affected. We do want our details chart, which is down here to be affected. We want our line chart to be affected, our orders band. We don't want the panel on the left-hand side, so the panel indicator and the panel total sales. We don't want that to be adjusted either. We do want our region header to be adjusted. We want our return rate band to be adjusted, our sales band right here to be adjusted. Uh, the sales per region bar chart that's over here, we don't want that to be adjusted. We do want our selection header to be adjusted. So that's the white uh, chart that you see here. And then we also want our top five chart to be adjusted. So we're going to say run our action on select and we want to leave the filter, meaning that whenever we select one, it's going to leave the region on the right hand side. Our target field is going to be region. Press OK, press OK. And then we are going to make sure that for each of these charts, so for the selection header, that our table layout is set to show uh, empty rows. So that's what's going to allow east, south, and west to stay in the same place. And we want to do the same thing for the bar chart as well, which is the sales per region. So we're going to make sure that that is also set to, to show um, empty rows. Now from there, when you select one of these, it's going to navigate to show you the central region. Navigate to show you this and navigate here. And to now bring the bar chart on the top as we want it to be, we can select the bar chart and we can say bring forward. And there you have it. Alrighty, so hopefully I did you all better justice by actually walking through that um, once, a, once again, um, even though we had some, some issues the first time.
And all this is is really just making sure you're sizing and trying to get things directly on top of top of the other so that you don't see stuff like hair. So that's all I did for the most part was just readjust the size to make sure that um, I had the look and feel that I, I wanted. And, and that's what a lot of time was spent on, on just adjusting things. Um, and, and that's all that I have for you folks. Uh, Mike, I'll actually transition it over, over to you. Sure. Thank you. I'm Chantilly sure. Jagannath and here's my Appreciate contact it. information, but I'm sure Mike has more information that he would like to share with you all. Yeah. And we might be able to knock out a few of these questions too, but, uh, Chantilly, will we make the recording available on your, um, is it your blog? Or where yes, I will. So it's going to be available on design secrets for a non-designer.com. Cool. And then someone asked, what was the name of the website used to design the background, the one that you used initially? That was Figma? That's Figma. And cool. there you go. And then another question that we got, could you use Illustrator um, in place of using Figma for design? Yes, you can. Uh, we have Illustrator as well. I'm just more familiar with other tools and not Illustrator. But yes, you can. Cool. And then why did you use PowerPoint for that transparent box as opposed to- no, I, I could have used Figma, but I had already, I have, um, I have already created a blank image within PowerPoint. So I typically just use it for really quick stuff. So exporting shapes rather quickly. So in, inserting and then exporting these shapes. So if, I, if it's rather simple, I just do it in PowerPoint. Cool. And then when you were putting the, I think it was the custom circle next to loss and profit, you had imported that circle. Um, can you, is there any chance you can switch back to that and just show how you did that one? Yeah, so I, I use um, circle alt code. And when you do that, it brings you to a list of, I, I use this site right here. You can copy and paste these. So you copy this, you go back here, and then you go to the worksheet, right click, format, and then under the numbers section, you can input an alt code here. So this is a smaller one, they have larger ones that you can incorporate as well. And then I'm just looking at some more of the questions. I think that's, I think that's everything for today. It looks like there are probably a couple more questions that will be answered, um, probably just by rewatching the recording. Probably just catch you in action again. And then, is the the dashboard the dashboard available for download, um, or, or is that just being shared as a as an image on Tableau Public? It's just an image on Tableau Public right now uh, because it was designed uh, by the company, uh, we typically do not allow uh, the public to download our company dashboards. Got it. And then I guess this will probably be our last question before signing off, uh, but how are triangles added in uh, bands? The up and down arrows? Yes, yeah. Okay, so those are also uh, alt codes but that's within the calculated field itself. So I have a, a label. So a label if it's red, a label if it's black, which is green. And if I go to that calculated field and edit it, you can see that I placed within the calculated field, the alt code triangle. So this is looking at the difference for sales. If it's greater than zero, then incorporate the up arrow. And then I change the number to a string so that you can incorporate it as a string and then added a label to the end of it so that I didn't have to do that within the text card here. Cool. And then just for everybody on the line, I'll be following up with all the resources. So if you, if you missed one of the email, link, or sorry, one of the, the links that Chantilly called out, You'll definitely get it in an email after the fact. Um, the recording will be available on Chantilly's blog and we'll link to that too. So with that, thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, Chantilly, thanks for presenting. And then 
we will um, we'll be doing more of these. So please um, join us again and let us know if you have any other feedback. Thank you so much. All righty. Thank you. Bye-bye.